So the reason I soak the pellets, you can see the gap that is between these pellets right now, the ones that are floating and the ones that are sunk. These guys are gonna need a lot. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys an update about all the fry I have in the fish room, what I do to feed all those fry, and what my process involves. So let's get into this week's video. Okay guys, let's feed some fish. So first thing I do is I turn the room light on and we do a bit of an inspection of the tanks. Everything's looking good. And then I turn the aquarium lights on. Scare some of the fish. I'll get used to it. All good. Okay. First thing I notice, these double-headed sponge filters up here in my Leilupi fry tank, it's come off. Uh, the suction cups on those sponge filters are quite poor and they're great over time. And what I end up having to do with those guys is anchoring them to the back of the tank using a stone. And that seems to work for a while, but um, overnight that one has come off. So all good, I'll fix that up. So just looking around the fish room, as you can see, not all the tanks look bright. And uh, I mentioned that in a couple of my videos. Uh, with the Calvis fry tanks, I don't have the lights on. So all these tanks here have Calvis fry in them. This one tank here has Calvis fry. Uh, the other tanks don't. Uh, however, the LED unit on this rack, uh, the transformer is dying. So the light looks, looks a little dim on this one. However, on this rack, you can see we've got some Lamprologos, Ocelatus Gold, now Lamprologos, Leilupi, and in this tank, we've got some Kawanga Golds. However, this tank has some white Alto Lamprologos Calvus. So on this tank, to stop the light from shining into the aquarium, I just put a black sheet of plastic, and that uh, blocks the light from going into the tank and scaring the Calvus fry. This tank isn't too bad. Uh, I still got a piece of plastic covering this tank here, which has some Calvus fry in it as well. However, because the transformer is dying on this LED unit, overall, the uh, tanks are all dim anyway. So what we're gonna do today is feed uh, the fry on this rack, and I'm gonna show you what that involves. Now, I've just come in here, looked at my Leilupi Aquarium, and I might get some footage uh, on my other camera so you can see it, but my Leilupi female has spawned again, and there are a heap of eggs underneath the rock. The amount of eggs that are on that rock underneath that cave is almost the length of her body. So that's amazing. And you can see in the aquarium, they've got some fry there. They're about two weeks old here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might try to take those fry out or unfortunately let nature run its course and hopefully she can defend her newly hatched fry from the freeze swimming fry. Uh, these fry in here are still quite young and it's gonna be very difficult to catch them out. Uh, without moving all the rocks out. I have done that before, uh, so I might do that again because that, at that spawn that's underneath that cave is quite large and I would like to uh, successfully raise them up. Uh, so we'll see what happens, what I decide in the next few days with that. However, this video is about feeding the fry in this fish room, so let's get to it. The first thing I do is grab my trusty footstool and place it here. I like to feed the fish in order so I don't forget any tank. And then I grab one of these guys. These little containers, you can buy them from your local grocery store. These containers are made for parties, for making little desserts in them, I believe. Uh, but I defrost my frozen foods in these and uh, soak my pellets before feeding to my fish in these. So I go to my little trusty cupboard here, which is from IKEA. See all the food that I've got in here. Uh, and I change the pellets that I feed the fish on a daily basis. So what I do now, put the funnel in there, open this guy, and pour some food in the container. It's easy as that. That's way too much. So I'll pour some back in. Hopefully you can see that on camera. And that should be enough for the entire fish room. So I pop this back, pop the funnel back. Then with this, 
pop this in a tank, I fill it with water, and I let those pellets soak. So the reason I soak the pellets, you can see the gap that is between these pellets right now, the ones that are floating and the ones that are sunk. Uh, this is the same type of pellet, they just some of them happen to float, some happen to sink. Now, over the next 10 minutes, the gap in between the floating pellets and the sunken pellets will decrease as the pellets expand with water. Now, I'd rather the pellets expand in this container than expand in my fish's guts. So, if, it, if you feel, I believe if you let the pellets uh, expand in, in, your, in the fish's stomach, that might lead to some swim bladder issues. I don't know if it's true, I'm not a scientist, it's just something that I have thought about uh, when I've noticed some fry develop swim bladder issues. So what I do is I soak the pellets for at least 10 minutes, let them swell up in this container. Then when I feed the pellets to my fish, they will only eat the amount that they need. When the pellets are smaller, they may feel the need to eat more, to feel full, and then those pellets expand in their gut rather than in this container, and that could crush their internal organs. That's what I believe. Again, I'm not a scientist. It's just something that, um, if you think about, kind of makes sense in your mind, uh, but again, I'm not sure if that is true. So just for a safety measure, I put the pellets uh, in a container like this and let them soak for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I feed them to the fish. So that way you're ensuring that the fish aren't overeating as well. The other thing I use, and I've showed this on other videos before, is a syringe, uh, obviously without the needle. Uh, I use a syringe to suck up the food out of the container and squirt it into the uh, aquariums. So the fish get their food that way. Uh, using a syringe does a couple things. One, it's, it breaks apart the pellets. These pellets will be pre-soaked, as you can see, they're getting soaked right now. Uh, as they expand, they get softer. The mere action of sucking the pellets into the syringe and then injecting them back out, smashes the pellets up. That means you don't have to pre-crush the pellets when they're dry and uh, they don't float. They get straight into the water column and the fry can easily eat them and digest them. And again, because they're pre-soaked, they won't overeat. They shouldn't overeat because they've already expanded in this container rather than expanding in the fish's gut. The other thing is, using a syringe, you don't have to touch the food. I don't have to touch the aquarium water. I don't have to touch the food. It minimizes contamination when you are feeding to your fry. If you've got soapy hands, uh, you can use a syringe, feed your fish, happy days, everything should be okay. Now, if we compare the footage of this uh, container compared to when I filled this container up with water from the aquariums, you can see that gap is closing. Now ask yourself this question, would you rather those pellets expand like that in your fish's stomach or expand in a container and then feed them to your fish? I know what I'd rather, so let's feed some fish shall we? So I inject the container with some pellets and here's some Lamprologus ocellatus gold fry that are getting some pellets. That's more than enough. Any of the uneaten pellets in this tank will get eaten by the bristlenose catfish. These guys are gonna need a lot. Okay, so these are Neolamprologus lelupi. Uh, the fry are just, some of them are pushing over an inch in length. And these guys, if you've seen my YouTube channel before and watched a couple of my videos, you know, you would know that these guys are going to go into one of the five footers in the corner to grow out very soon because I've already sold about a hundred lay loopy uh, recently. So these guys are eating happy days, a couple more syringes full of pellets. Now you see the containers run out of water. I'm gonna simply pop it into the aquarium, get some more water syringe the pellets up and inject it in the aquarium. Now this syringe is quite old, sometimes the plunger does come off, I fix up the syringe and happy days it works for a couple more days until it comes off again. All I need to do when that happens is wet the, wet the plunger and it works. You can hear the squeaky noise it makes. Normal syringes don't do that <laughs> when they're um, brand new. So you can see the fish are eating Happy days. I think that's enough for them for now. Let's go to the next tank. Move over. 
And these are my Metrikama Kawanga Golds. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the first name uh, correctly. I'm not that familiar with um, Malawi cichlids. I won the parents in, a, in my cichlid raffle and they've bred quite a few fry for me. So these guys grow very fast. They are about oh, a month old. Whereas the black Alto Emperor Logus Calvus here are about two to three months old. And the Kawinga Golds are already easily doubled their size. Very fast growers, the late Malawian cichlids compared to Tanganyikan. So I've got some more pellets in the syringe that I'll give to the Leilupi. Now what I'm gonna do is come down here and I'm gonna feed these Calvus some of this stuff. Now this stuff stinks. It's live food and it's called microworms. So basically what you do, you run your finger along the edge. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Scoop up some microworms on your fingers. This stinks like hell. And you just pop it in the aquarium. Now they are, as their name suggests, microworms. They are tiny. So they're in the water now. Hopefully you can see on camera the white, they, these are white Altolampologus calvus fry. They're picking off the live food, the live microworms. So I feed these guys a combination of live microworms, baby brine shrimp, and pellets soaked in aquarium water. Using this syringe, it breaks the pellets apart and they get a great feed. Also feed them rapashi. I've got to make some of it up. I uh, have been quite lazy with that recently, so I've got quite a few containers that I uh, can use with that. So I uh, will pull my finger out soon and make some up. They love that stuff. But as you can see, they're feeding off the microworms in the water column. Those microworms will stay alive in the, in the water column for hours. It's fantastic stuff. If you don't have a microworm culture, I really do suggest you source some. If you don't have some and you live in Sydney or Australia, I'm pretty sure I could be able to send you some, so hit me up, jasoncichlids at gmail.com. Okay, next aquarium getting fed. These guys in this aquarium are, again, White Alto Lamprologus calvus. They are the older brothers and sisters of the tank you just saw. And that's pretty much all I put in this tank. There's only a handful around this size. Uh, these guys are pretty much the fourth generation of Calvus fry that I have in the fish room. And you can see they're a bit skittish, but they're okay. They'll eat whatever they don't eat, bristlenose catfish will feed off. In this aquarium, I've got some Lamprologus ocellatus gold. These are the oldest fry that I have from my breeding trio that passed away last year. I lost my breeding trio in all three fish in the span of a month. It was really strange. I believe it was my fault. I moved in some Neolamprologus Lailupi next door to them and uh, within that month, all the Lamprologus Ocellatus gold died. So I believe they may have died from shock and stress. So in this aquarium, we've got my oldest Lamprologus Ocellatus gold fry and some Ventralis Tritica fry at the back there. They really need to go out of this tank and they will be going out of this tank very soon. I need to pull my finger out again and get that done because they are quite light for this tank and that isn't great for them. Okay, next aquarium. We have some black Alto Lamprologus Calvus fry. In here, these guys are a little bit larger. Uh, there are some that are pushing the two centimeter mark. So in this aquarium, I inject some of those soaked pellets as well as microworms. I'll get some microworms off the container and put them in here. These guys are getting a bit big to feed off live microworms, but I do it because it's a different food for the fry to feed off. I like to feed all my fish a wide range of foods to ensure they're getting a wide range of vitamins and minerals that they need to grow. And feeding them live microworms, yes, they are a little bit larger for eat, to eat live microworms, but Again, it's a different food for them, different vitamins and minerals that they will need. And uh, if anything is missing from the pellets or the baby brine shrimp, um, they're getting it through the live microworms. Just ensuring that they're getting all those vitamins and minerals that they need to grow into healthy adult fish. Now I'll point out, look at the difference. If I fill this up, 
I want to show you the difference in how many, how much space is left in this container. And I've already fed that many tanks pellets. Hardly any room left in this container. That's how much these pellets or aquarium pellets expand in aquarium water. Again, I'd rather the pellets expand in the aquarium water in this container than in my fish's stomachs. A lot safer for the fish. Now in here, I have my second breeding pair of Neolamprologus Lelupi. They're not doing too well. I've had these fry in here with their parents for far too long. And these parents need to go in their own uh, tank to spawn. I'll be putting them in a two foot by two foot aquarium that is, six, uh, that is 14 inches deep, 14 inches high. Uh, but again, it's just one of those things that I haven't been able to get around to because I've just been so busy. It will happen. I just haven't done it yet. Need to pull my finger out and do it. Okay, next aquarium. Okay, my calvus rack. These guys in here are white Artelamprologus calvus. Hopefully you can see them on camera. There are a load in here. And some of them are pushing an inch. So I feed them a little bit more pellets than the other calvus aquariums. On this entire rack, these six aquariums, all I have is calvus. So this is one of the first, uh, this is the first white calvus tank on this rack. And I think these guys, and I lose track, because I have, sometimes have to mix the fry of cal the calvus fry together because they grow at different rates. Uh, so to prevent cannibalism, you mix them together around the, so they're around the same size. Uh, and I believe these guys are my fifth generation. So we got more white Atalampologus calvus fry in here. And they're going crazy for the pellets. And sorry guys, I'm not sure how old these guys are here. They'll probably be about four to five months old at this size. Uh, and I've only recently started them on pellets. Okay, next to aquariums. And you can see, I haven't been reaching for a lid on these calvus tanks. Only this, this tank has a lid on it and this tank has a lid on it. These two middle tanks don't need lids uh, because the calvus are still quite small. It's impossible for them to jump out of these aquariums. Uh, I don't put lids on my calvus tanks purely so I don't shock them when I'm taking the lid off, putting the lid back on. Uh, this tank does have a lid on it and it's very hard to see the calvus in this tank because it's quite dark. Sorry for that guys. But I do that so I don't stress the calvus out. The tanks that do have lids on them, I simply push them to the side and lift them like that and then place them down very gently so don't shock the fish. So if you've got calvus, calvus fry, I recommend you don't put lights on the tanks. You have a clean substrate and don't put the lids on the tanks until they start to reach about uh, just over the two centimeter mark. So those guys are eating and again, sorry for the dark tanks. I don't have to like to have the lights on until they're oh, about an inch long then they're a little bit more hardier. So that's those fry. I've still got some more fry to feed though on this rack. And those fry that I'm feeding on this rack still are in this aquarium. These guys are beautiful. I love them. They're my first Autolamprologus calvus fry that I spawned. They're just over two years old and some of them are now at the sexual maturity age. So beautiful looking fish. Just feed them some of this stuff. You'll see them come up. With these guys, you don't want to wave your hand around the aquarium, so you can see how slowly I pull my hand away, so I don't scare them off. And you can see the different ranges, the, the different sizes that I've got in here. Smaller ones, you can presume are female, the larger ones are the male, are the males. And you can see how long some of those larger ones, dorsal fins are, like this guy right in the center here. Pretty big calvus. Uh, that I've grown up from fry. I'm really proud of that one. It's gonna be very hard for me to sell these guys. Uh, it always has been, um, especially these larger ones now. But the good news is the auctions are back on, the club meetings are back on. So uh, April meeting, April 2020, uh, first Saturday in April, 
It's going to be the first uh, meeting back for the New South Wales Cichlid Society, and I can't wait. And some of these guys will be in the auction. So if you're interested in buying some of our fish, head on down to the auction at Moorbank. Okay, and the last fry on this rack getting fed are these guys, and they are my Neolamprologus Leilupi fry. So obviously I'm feeding the parents in conjunction with feeding the fry. Uh, I've just popped some pellets in here. These fry are far too small to obviously eat the whole pellets, uh, but there is powder in there from the mere action of sucking the pellet into the syringe and then uh, pushing it back out. That crushes some of the pellets up and they go into the water column as powder. And then the fry can get a wide range of vitamins and minerals from those pellets. I'll also throw in some microworms if I can get some from one of some of my other containers because I used all the other ones up. Pop that in and that should do them. And that's all my fry in this, in, on this side of the fish room. That's all my fry. So as you can see, top tanks are pretty much full of fry. Every single tank has fry in it. And uh, that's what you want in a fish room. And now that I've fed all the fry in the fish room, actually going, I am going to feed these guys a little bit more. The rest of the fish in the fish room get whatever is left in this container. So let's pop some more in there. We'll do some more. You can see how easy it is with the syringe. Um, I'll just quickly mention some of these pellets, again, they float, some sink. These pellets are sold as sinking pellets and I have no idea why some of them float. With my system, with my setup, I run a sump system. This is the sump down here. Uh, I don't like floating pellets purely because if pellets float and the fish don't get them, they're going to get suck, sucked up out of the aquarium, down the bulkhead and end up in the sump. A waste of money on my fish food. So I rather pellets that sink. But the good thing is, again, using a syringe, even the pellets that float in that container, the mere action of sucking them up into the syringe makes them sink. So there you go. My calvers fry having a good feed. Aren't they beautiful? So there you have it guys, my process of feeding all the fry I have in the fish room. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.